Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to a daily quiz video for today. Also reminding you, this Sunday, that is the 4th of December at 11 a.m., you have a great chance to win up to 90% scholarship on the Baiju's IAS preparation courses. All that you have to do is give this two-hour preparation test, which is free of cost. According to your score, you will be offered scholarship from our courses. The link to register for this test is given in the description of this video. Now let's begin with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to the Great Indian Bustard. Number one, the Great Indian Bustard is a state bird of Rajasthan. Second, the IUCN red list of GIB is critically endangered. Third, it is kept under the Species Recovery Program under the Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitats of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. How many of these given statements are correct about the Great Indian Bustard? All these three given statements are correct and the answer has to be C. All of these are correct. Now the Great Indian Bustard has been in the news for various reasons. Today specifically it has been covered in the newspapers because hearing a plea to protect the endangered bird that is a Great Indian Bustard, the Supreme Court of India has asked the government of India whether is it possible to launch a project called Project Great Indian Bustard similar to the Project Tiger that has been launched. The Supreme Court has said that the Project Tiger has paid great dividends about the species and it might be good to have similar kind of a project for the Great Indian Bustard as well. Now as you know, this bird is mainly found in Rajasthan and Gujarat and has been categorized as critically endangered. If you remember, just a few weeks back, there was a news that some of these birds had actually crossed the border and were seen in Pakistan as well. Also, this is not the first time that the Supreme Court has ordered some things with regards to the Great Indian Bustard. In 2021 April, the court had ordered that all the overhead transmission lines in the core and potential habitats of this bird in Rajasthan and Gujarat should be made underground to protect them coming in touch with those fires. Next, question number two. Consider the following statements with regards to the gross value added, that is GVA. Number one, while GVA gives a picture of the state of economic activity from the producer side or supply side, the GDP gives a picture from the consumer side or demand perspective. Second, the GVA is defined as a value of output minus the value of intermediate consumption. And third, the GVA is as susceptible to vulnerabilities from the use of inappropriate or flawed methodologies as any other measure. Which of these given statements is or are correct about the GVA? The correct answer here is D. All the three given statements about the GVA are correct. Now as you know, GVA along with the GDP are some of the ways in which a country's economic progress is measured by the government of India. This is a big news in the Indian Express newspaper today about the quarter to GDP data. This also talks about the GVA, that is a gross value added. Usually many people believe that the gross value added would be a better way to ascertain what progress has been made by the nation's economic sector across the entire year and not really be dependent on the GDP. The GVA data of quarter two actually shows that manufacturing has declined by 4.3%. This is significant because manufacturing is the largest job creation sector if it is done well. And because the manufacturing is not being able to give enough jobs, a lot of people are turning towards agriculture, thus stressing the sector even more. Next question number three. Which of the following is not true about the Khel Ratna Award? Number one. The Khel Ratna Award was instituted in 1991-92 and the first recipient was chess legend Vishwanathan Anand. Second. The Khel Ratna Award is the highest sporting award given by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports for the spectacular and most outstanding performance in the field of sports by a sportsman over a period of 10 years. Third, in 2001, sport shooter Abhinav Bindra, then aged 18, became the youngest recipient of the award. And fourth, the award from 1991 to 2021 was named after Rajiv Gandhi, the former Prime Minister of India. Which of these is not true about this award? The correct answer here is B. So the reason why the second statement is wrong is that performances of the last four years are seen and not 10 years. 
as you know, Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award, which is the full name of this award. It is the highest award in the field of sports given by the government of India, specifically by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. It was earlier called the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna till 2021 and the name was then changed and now it is called as Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award. All the other statements are true. In 2001, Abhina Bindra became the youngest recipient of the award when he was only 18 years old. This is why we are asking this question. The President of India has conferred this award on the sporting legends across the country including Achant Sharat Kamal, the table tennis player and the famous boxer Nikhat Zarin for their consistent performance over the last four years or so. A total of 25 sportsmen were conferred this award by the President of India. Next question number four. Consider the following statements with regards to genetically modified crops in India. Number one. BT cotton, the only GM crop that is allowed in India, has two alien genes from the soil bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis that allows the crop to develop a protein toxic to the common pest pink ballworm. Second. In India, the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is the apex body that allows for commercial release of the GM crop. Third, since the introduction of Bt cotton in India in 2002-03, the area under its cultivation has hardly increased. Which of these given statements is or are correct? Now, as you know, GM crops have been in the news in the country mainly because of GM mustard, Dhara 11. The question, however, is about the earlier GM crops. Out of these three given statements, the third is wrong. Ever since the introduction of Bt cotton, the area under cultivation of Bt cotton has increased drastically. In fact, many reports say that over 90% of the area under cultivation for cotton in India is now used for Bt cotton, which signals the great success that Bt cotton has had in India ever since its introduction. Now, first statement is wrong. Many people would say that this is now not the only GM crop, but it, it still remains the only GM crop because for GM mustard specifically, the last step, that is, the cabinet giving the go-ahead has still not happened. So for GM mustard, the GEAC has given approval. On the other hand, the cabinet's approval still is pending. So unless the cabinet approval comes in, we will only have to say that BT cotton still remains the only GM crop allowed in India because the GEAC approval for GM mustard had come in earlier as well once. So, first and second are correct. The answer here would be A. Third statement is wrong. The reason why we are asking this question is because the Supreme Court is saying that they are worried about the effect of GM crops on the livelihood of women farm laborers. So, women farm laborers that form a major part of the rural workforce and agricultural sector. There is a petition that is filed that because of GM mustard crop, which would themselves be herbicide tolerant crops, they would not really require women to work so much in the agricultural field as laborers and that is why they would actually have a hard time. So women agricultural laborers are traditionally engaged in de-weeding of the crops and now that GM mustard would automatically be free of any weeds, maybe it would impact the livelihood of women. That is a petition filed in the Supreme Court of India. Next is a previous year question from 2017. The painting of Bodhisattva Padmapani is one of the most famous and oft-illustrated paintings at Ajanta, Badami, Bagh or Ellora. It's a question from art and culture, not the easiest to answer. The correct answer here is A. Ajanta. So it is one of those famous paintings that are found in the Ajanta caves actually. As you know, scenes from Jatak stories of the life of Gautam Buddha and the earlier lives of Gautam Buddha when he was considered a Bodhisattva are actually seen in the Ajanta caves. Apart from that, various other Bodhisattva paintings are seen in various caves, including the Vajrapani, the Manjusri, and also the Padmapani, which is a symbol of Buddha's compassion. Another very famous painting in the Ajanta caves is that of the dying princess in cave number 16. Next, we want to discuss a fact of the day, and today we want to bring back a topic that has been discussed very widely in Indian polity, that is the Jammu Kashmir Reorganization Act. Now, the Supreme Court has said 
Why is it that the constitutional validity of Jammu Kashmir Reorganization Act clause has remained unchallenged so far? Now, as you know, the Jammu Kashmir Reorganization Act was the act because of which Jammu Kashmir as a state was reorganized. That is, it was divided into two separate union territories, one Ladakh and the other being the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, there have been multiple questions asked about this act. Here, specifically, the Supreme Court has quizzed the petitioners about the reason for not challenging the constitutional validity of Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act, which gives the Delimitation Commission the power to carry out the readjustment of the constituencies after the dilution of Article 370. Now, the entire question here is based on Delimitation Commission. Delimitation Commission, as you know, is the commission that has to decide on the distribution of seats in the Legislative Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. So they would decide how many seats would be given to the Jammu and Kashmir Legislative Assembly, which area would get how many seats, etc. Recently, the report of the Delimitation Commission had come out and many people are not happy with this report. The Supreme Court is saying, the petitioners, why did you not challenge it when the law was made eventually? From this act, the Supreme Court has quoted Section 62. Section 62 of this act provides for readjustment of constituencies that shall be carried out by the Delimitation Commission. The court has asked the petitioners, without challenging the source of government notification, why have they actually overlooked that and looked at the other parts? The petitioners, on the other hand, have said that only Election Commission under Section 60 of this Act was empowered to conduct the delimitation exercise and not the delimitation commission. So they are challenging how is it that the delimitation commission can actually have the power to delimit the seats in the new legislative assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. This matter is still being heard and it remains to be seen what will be the outcome of this matter in the coming days or so. This is it for today's daily quiz video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day ahead.